Hey everybody, welcome back to our 30 day ECG challenge. My name is Reed. Today we are on day number 19. Pretty crazy. We're almost two thirds of the way done. Uh, we're going to be transitioning now to accelerated junctional rhythm. This is a pretty neat rhythm. Pretty simple, but neat. I think it's uh, fascinating. So first thing we're going to do is like always do, we're going to get an idea of what's going on with the rhythm. And when I scan through, I notice that we have a regular rhythm. If you look here, we've got QRSs that are rattling off as expected. Now, if I look closely to develop uh, maybe a better idea of ventricular depolarization, I notice that I have a narrow QRS. So remember that narrow QRS, meaning that the QRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds. That narrow QRS tells me that I know that this rhythm is being generated at or above the level of the AV node because the AV node, when it creates ventricular depolarization, sends signal down the bundle of Hiss by bundle branches, and these are special fibers that are very rapidly conducting so that my signal travels through the ventricles quickly, right? Because remember that our x-axis is time in EKG. So we've got a narrow QRS that's occurring regularly. If I find a QRS that lands on a solid line like I do here, I can develop a rate that's 300, 150, 100. This would be 75. So somewhere between 75 and 100, I'll call that maybe 90 beats per minute. So we have a narrow complex rhythm at 90 beats per minute. And so I'm, well, this is probably a sinus rhythm. Let's take a look in front and make sure that we have nice atrial activity driving the rhythm. And I look in front and what you'll notice is that I don't see any atrial activity. And I'm like, huh, maybe there's atrial activity that's buried in, you know, better seen another lead. I look up in here in V1, I don't see any atrial activity. Certainly no organized atrial activity, very flat baselines before the QRS complexes. And so I started to wonder if maybe this is a junctional rhythm. But remember that junctional rhythms that arise from the AV junction, so say there's a beat that arises from the AV junction, it's going to send signal down that Hisperkinji fiber in a normal fashion, creating a nice narrow QRS complex. We think, that we think of the junction that creates normally a junctional what? Escape. We think of normally a junctional escape because usually the AV junction doesn't take a rhythm over unless it has to, unless something else has failed, like the sinus node has failed. And usually junctional escapes occur at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. So this is definitely not a junctional escape because we have a rhythm that's at a rate of 90 beats per minute. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just want to verify one more time that this is certainly not coming from any supraventricular origin. So I look maybe on top of the ST segments and T waves of the preceding beats to just see, are there any extra P waves that are lingering around somewhere? Maybe this is just a massively, you know, first degree block or something, and I don't see any as I scan through. And so this certainly seems like there's a junctional, there's a junctional rhythm that's arising from somewhere within the AV junction, firing off at a rate of 90 beats per minute, causing ventricular depolarization in a normal, narrow fashion, right? If you look here, my QRS complexes are upright in lead one, and they're upright in AVF. Remember, lead one is to the left, and lead AVF is down. So if they're upright in both of those, that tells you that my QRS axis is normal. I've got nice septal R waves here that grow and grow and become dominant here in V4. So I tell you, this, this conduction system looks really good. My QT intervals look great. I don't see any pathological Q waves no acute ischemic changes. And so what's actually happening here is we're just having uh, a junctional rhythm that is accelerated, right? Because it's going faster than what a junctional rhythm usually is. Usually it's a junctional escape, but because it's faster and at 90 beats per minute, we will call this an accelerated junctional rhythm, right? So this individual's junction is a bit hyperactive. There must be a foci uh, or focus that's somewhere within the AV junction that's creating a nice narrow complex rhythm. It's just occurring too fast at 90 beats per minute. Uh, so you might be asking, well, what's, what's happening within the atria, right? If this is happening within the ventricles, what's happening within the atria? Well, depending on the junctional focus, sometimes these focuses, yes, they can fire off and send signals down into the ventricles, but they can also send retrograde signals up into the atria and cause retrograde atrial depolarization. That's not always so hard to tell because if that's happening simultaneously, those retrograde P waves aren't always able 
to be noticed, right? Those retrograde P waves. And in this case, that might be the case. So it's hard to say, but I can certainly say that this is an accelerated junctional rhythm uh, that probably needs to be further investigated depending on the clinical course, right? So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions about it, please let me know into the comments. Um, hope this helps you dial in your anatomical uh, assessment of EKGs. Remember, any finding that you have, you want to be able to explain it anatomically and physiologically and make sure that it fits. And so if you can't explain it physiologically, then it's probably not happening. So in this case, that's why we're calling this an accelerated junctional because we've investigated all the other causes, ectopic beats, sinus beats, uh, all the things, and we've narrowed it out to this anatomically. So hope this helps and have a good rest of your day. Take care.